Hi everyone. Well, uh, this is 7.0 notes on right triangle trig and gosh, I was a little disappointed with these two examples. They really didn't show enough trig. So we're going to get into that a little bit more in these videos here. So you may or may not have seen this last year, but the phrase to solve a triangle, it's kind of funny. It's like, how do I solve a shape? But to solve a triangle means that we find all missing sides and all the missing angles. So we always need obviously three sides and three angles to finish the triangle. And then this is how we use our trig trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, so I'm going to refer to these as we do some examples. You always have to pick the tri 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 correct trig function. And I love um, what the students, ah, it froze, shoot. I was saying I loved what the students showed me today that it, it's easier to write it like this, so ka toa, because um, it tells you what goes on top in your fraction. Okay, choose the correct trig function, write your own equation correctly, and then you isolate the variable, and then use original trig functions when you know the angle, but if you're trying to find the angle, we have to use inverse trig functions, so hopefully we'll see an example of that. Here we go. Example three, uh, label your picture, so AC equals 11, and then CB equals 16. So we're going to find little c. Now we don't always have to use trig. If you know two sides, you can always use Pythagorean theorem. So let's do that to start. Remember, we're trying to solve. So we need all the angles and all the sides. So we're going to find little c, which is the hypotenuse, by using Pythag. That is not how you spell Pythag, but I was saying pi and thag at the same time. Oh, you guys know what Pythag is, so let's just do it. 11 squared plus 16 squared will equal c squared. Okay, what's 11 squared? 121. What's 16 squared? If you don't know, grab a calculator and knock it out. Okay, 16 squared is 256, and when we add 121 plus 256, we get uh, 377. So to isolate our variable c, c will equal the square root of 377. And if you're using a calculator, we would plug that in and we round to three places up the decimal point. So that's our side C. All right, let's get into some trig. Uh, what should we find first? Should we find, let's find angle A. Okay, angle A. Now, I don't want to use side C. What if I made a mistake on that? So I'm only going to use the 11 and the 16 to find angle A. So which trig function is the right one to use? Remember I said I'm not going to use hypotenuse. So I don't want sine and I don't want cosine. I'm going to use tangent. Here we go. The tangent of angle A. So it always has to be the tangent of an angle. We don't know angle A yet. So the tangent of A will equal the opposite. So what's opposite of A? all the way on the other side, the 16 is opposite, and adjacent to A is side 11. So here we are here, we're trying to find an angle. Now what did our notes say? Let's see. We use the original trig functions to evaluate an angle, but we don't know what the angle is, so we're going to use the inverse trig functions to find angles. Okay, so we're, we need to move this tan to the other side. You can't divide by tan because it's not multiplication. Um, so angle A will equal the arc tan or inverse tan. Arc tan or inverse tan are the same things, okay? Arc tan and inverse tan of 16 over 11, okay? Sometimes we leave our answers not in decimal, but this, we need to find the decimal answer. So how do you find arc tan? You do second tangent on the calculator, second tangent. Uh, step one, turn it on. Okay, second tangent. And you see that tan to the negative one, that's the same as arctan. Okay, so the arctan will be 16 divided by 11, and we should get a nice angle there. Now, how do you know you did it right? Well, angles will be positive, they'll be between 0 and 90. Uh, 55.491 degrees. And that's going to be angle A. All right, now do we need trig to find angle B? Nope, we don't because angles A plus B plus C must add up to 180 degrees. 
uh, and also angles A plus angle B must add up to 90 because C is already 90. So to find angle B, we're going to do 90 degrees minus the answer we just got for angle A. I'm going to type that in the calculator. 90 minus, okay, look at this. You could do second minus sign. And then that, what that says is I want to take 90 and subtract my answer from before. And we get that. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. Okay. 34.508 degrees is our measurement for angle B. Did we solve the triangle? Do we have all three sides? Yes. And do we have all three angles? Yep. Congrats. Here we go. We used Pythag, we used trig, and we used sum of three angles. Let's do example four. All right, mark what they told you. So the measure of angle A is 43 degrees. So we should be able to figure out measure B. And CB, where's CB? CB is 12.5. 12.5. So we we'll are do the easiest one first. We're going to find the measure of angle B. And A and B will add up to 90. So we're going to do 90 minus 43 degrees equals what? Measure of angle B will equal 47 degrees. So that's angle B. All right, what should we find next? Let's see here. Uh, let's label these. So let's label this C. And let's label this little b. We got to find those missing sides. Um, here we go. We're gonna. I'm gonna use the angle given because what if we messed up on angle b? So I don't want to use that one. I'm gonna use the one they give us. They gave us so 43. Let's see how should we find side. Let's find side b next. So what trig function are we gonna use if we know 43 and we know what the heck? What is this? 12.5 degrees. That's wrong. Okay, let's find side B. So what trig function will we use 12.5 and B? So here's our angle. What side is this and what side is this? It's not the hypotenuse. So this is going to be the opposite. Do you ever mark it with a little O sometimes? And then next to the angle here is the adjacent side. So what function uses the opposite side and the adjacent side? Yep, tangent. Okay, tangent of the angle. So we used tangent before, but we wrote A because we didn't know angle A. But now we're going to write tangent of angle 43. So tangent of angle 43 will equal the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which is B. Okay, if the, if the variable's in the numerator, then we just get to multiply by the number. But when the variable's in the denominator, we have to switch these spots. Super easy. Ask your teacher if you're not sure, why are we switching? Um, we've just gone over it so many times that we need to know. It's kind of like cross multiply and divide, just in one step. So B will equal 12.5 divided by the tangent of 43. Here we go. 12.5, uh, it's a little dark, divided by the tangent of 43. And thank goodness for calculators. Here we go. 13.4 equal 13.405.405. Three places after the decimal place because that's how AP goes. AP Calc and AP Physics. Uh, what else do we have to find? Side C. Do we need trig for C or we can use the Pythagorean theorem? So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A squared, A squared, A squared. A was 12.5. B is what we just found. And that's going to equal C squared. Here we go. 12.5 squared plus, you remember my little trick? Do second negative. That takes my previous answer and I'm going to square that. And we get this, which I'm going to write it down, but I'm actually going to leave it in the calculator because now I need to do a square root. 
a square root of both sides. So the square root of this should equal C. Okay, watch. So second x squared. So now we have the square root, and I want the square root of the answer, the previous answer. And we get 18. 18.328. How do we know these are right? Uh, this is my favorite little trick from geometry, is that the biggest angle will be across from the biggest side. So the 90 degrees is across from the 18. That's good. And then the middle angle, 47, will be across from side B, which is 13.405. And then the smallest angle, 43, is across from the smallest side. That's a little check. Uh, you could have used trig to find angle C if you wanted to. But there we go, that's solving a triangle. All right, now we practice, what do we practice? The sum equals, sum of angles equals 180. We practice Pythagorean theorem. We practice finding angles up here. We practice finding sides. Ta-da, we're gonna do some word problems. All right, a 30 foot ladder is leaning against the side of a house, making a 70 degree angle with the ground. How far up the side of the house does the ladder reach? So we're looking for this height is y. I usually, we don't use h anymore because h is hypotenuse. So y, like on the y axis, we're going to use y. Okay, so given 70 degrees and y and 30, which of the three trig functions are we going to use? Sine, cosine, or tangent? So this is, we don't have the adjacent side. We have the opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. So which trig function is that? Opposite over hypotenuse. It's going to be sine. Here we go. Sine of 70, always sine of the angle, equals y divided by 30. Your goal in life as a math student is to isolate the variable. So we have y is being divided by 30, which means we're going to multiply both sides by 30 because 30 divided by 30 is the number one. And you get one y. One y equals 30 times the sine of 70. And if you need to, plug it in your calculator to get a decimal answer, you can. 30 times the sine of 70, just like that. 28.191. Do we give, <laughs> do we use units? Oh, look, units. 30 feet. So it's 28 feet up the side of the wall. What is the horizontal distance between the bottom of the ladder and the house? So this value x. We could use Pythagorean theorem, but let's use trig again. All right. So let's use trig. Let's use the cosine of 70 will equal x over 30. Now, will this be the same answer? No, because cosine of 70 is different than the sine of 70. So we're going to have 30 times the cosine of 70 will equal x. Multiply both sides by 30, just like we did before. Now we're going to do 30 times the cosine of 70. And the latter is 10 feet away from the house. A 30-foot ladder. I don't even, Can there be a 30-foot ladder? That seems really long. Um, maybe it's like a, what, like a fireman ladder. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching this little review notes. Uh, you should have a practice page after this.